we're going to look at another story about Adonijah. We looked at uh, David and how he finished strong for the Lord. And weeks ago, before actually before Christmas, and we took a break for Christmas messages, uh, we looked at how Adonijah, when David's on his deathbed, and Adonijah comes in, he's, he's, he's setting himself up as king. And this guy, Adonijah, this is David's son. And he wants to be king. He's going to be king, even though God has made it clear Solomon's to be king. And so we remember, if you remember the story, um, that uh, Nathan, Nathan goes to Bathsheba, tells Bathsheba to go in to, Saul, to David and tell him what's going on. And David, uh, David gives directions uh, so that they go and anoint Solomon king. And uh, at the end of chapter 1, Adonijah is with all, in verse 41, Adonijah and all the guests that were with him heard as they had made an end of eating. When Joab heard the sound of the trumpet, he said, Wherefore is this noise of the city being an uproar? You know, what's going on here? What's happening? Well, Adonijah, he, he uh, just never, shh, it just, shh, the guy, the guy, you could say, yeah, he didn't know what was going on all right. Um, his, his whole life wanting to be king when God had said Solomon was to be king. And so they tell, they tell Adonijah that, they go through and explain it to him that you're not king. You're not king. Solomon is king. And so the chapter at chapter one ends, and Solomon says to Adonijah in verse 52, Solomon said, If he will show himself a worthy man, there shall not a hair of him fall to the earth. But if wickedness shall be found in him, he shall die. So King Solomon sent, and they brought him down from the altar. And he came and bowed himself to King Solomon. And Solomon said unto him, Go to thy house. So Solomon is merciful to Adonijah and given Adonijah a chance to come to his senses. And tonight we want to look at uh, Adonijah's debt of self-deception, his depth of self-destruction, hor horrible depth of self-deception, and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray as we look at your word tonight that you would bless your holy word and pray that uh, you would open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things from your law and Pray that you give us principles that we can apply to our lives and that also will help us to just see, uh, see things, um, just how, how uh, self-deceptive uh, things are and how deceived people are and, and also to be warned that how we can we can also be deceived. And pray that your Holy Spirit would teach us and that your Holy Spirit would help me as I preach. In Jesus' name, amen. So, like I said, the, the name of the message is Adonijah's Death of Self-Deception. And it's just amazing that Adonijah, after he's been given this second chance, and, I mean, it's just made so clear that God has anointed Solomon king. That he's at it again. He's at it again. And 
So in chapter 2, in verse 12, our story begins. But as I was reading and studying it, studying this story, I was just thinking, uh, how, how could Adonijah be so self-deceived? Uh, this morning in the message, it came out about putting on the new man, uh, putting off the old man. And it mentioned about how the old man, um, how did it say that? And peek back, we just looked at it, but in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 4, the old man, it says in verse 22, Ephesians chapter 4, that you put off concerning the former conversation, that is, the former lifestyle, uh, the old man, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Deceitful lust. And think of the deceitful lust of the unsaved man and things he thinks that are going to make him happy. If only I can have this. If only I can do this. If only I can get this. That will make me happy. And it's all deceitful lust. And it's the Lord and knowing him as our Savior. That's what makes us uh, content. And that's what life is all about. But those deceitful, deceitful lusts. Look at Hebrews chapter 3. Hebrews chapter 3. God even warns. It's not just the old man that uh, is given to deceitful lusts. But God warns his people in Hebrews chapter 3. And beginning verse 12, it says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. The deceitfulness of sin. And we know Jeremiah 17, 9. That was one of our memory verses. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And it, it should humble us and, and cause us to fear God and seek God that we can be so, so deceived. Get something into our head and we think, you know, the Bible says there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. That's definitely Adonijah. We just memorize uh, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall, and that is so Adonijah. And it, it just uh, so he's... Uh, so self-deceived. We could get something in our mind uh, and, you know, this is going to, I could tell you how self -de When I was a kid, I thought, I mean, I'm a kid. Even in high school, I thought, I thought maybe I'll be a professional basketball player. That is like, so unbelievably self-deceived. It's just so self-deceived. Like, come to reality. It's like, this could never happen. And when you look at Adonijah, it's like, Adonijah, you are so self-deceived. Is it because you grew up in the palace, you had everything handed to you. Your father never said a word that would, you know, discourage you or go against you. You're so handsome. You're so good looking. Uh, and you got you got Joab following you and Abiathar following you. And, and you know, is we, you think you're going to be king. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And people think, somehow they think that they're going to make it to heaven without the Lord Jesus. 
and they're self-deceived, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Uh, we need to be like Job. Look at Job. Turn to Job chapter 6. Job chapter 6. And verse 24, Job says, Teach me, and I will hold my tongue and cause me to understand wherein I have erred. With that kind of attitude, just, Lord, teach me. I got to keep my mouth shut because... You know, who am I? Who am I to who am I to say? It's caused me to understand wherein I have erred. Then if you turn to Job thirty-four. I hope you have this one underlined in your Bible, because we've mentioned it. We've mentioned it a few times. But Job thirty-four, thirty-two, Job says that which I see not, teach thou me. What a great, great prayer uh, for all of us, all the time. That which I see not, teach thou me. If I have done iniquity, I will do no more. That definitely wasn't Adonijah's prayer. I mean, he's totally blind with conceit and can't get it out of his mind that he's going to be king. Uh, we also want to pray, look at Psalm 19. Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And then Psalm 139. And verse 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. You can be sure that Adonijah never prayed that prayer. Let's look at the depths of the depths of Adonijah's self-deception. It says in verse 12, back in 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 12, it says, Then sat Solomon upon the throne of David his father, and his kingdom was established greatly. His kingdom was established greatly. So the first, I'll number these, because my wife, my wife, she, I like it when I can number things. I like it when I can number things. So num number, but they're long points, sweetie. You have to just write fast. Number one, Adonijah thought he could still be king even after Solomon's kingdom was established greatly. He thought he could still be king even after he's already gone through almost, almost being put away one time. But he still thinks, he still thinks he might be, that he's going to be king. And God help us to ask God to help us to see, to open our eyes, to, to look around, to look around and uh, just uh, what? Wake up and, and, and smell. How do they say? Wake up and smell the coffee? Is that what they say? That's what Hollywood like. Wake up and smell the coffee. Like, Look around and realize that it's, uh, it's God's way. It's God's way. Uh, God is sovereign. 
God is sovereign. Uh, as for God, his way is perfect. And it's not about your way. It's not about my way. And Adonijah was just totally stuck on his way. And he wanted to be king. And really, anybody that rejects the Lord as their savior, it's all about their way. They don't want God's way. And just amazing how Adonijah is totally deceiving himself. He's going to lose his life over this. And people that reject the Lord uh, will perish and spend eternity in hell, the Bible tells us. And it's a matter of self-deception. And so he thought he could be king even after Solomon's kingdom was established greatly. You think he would have looked at that and said, well, I tried. I tried, but Solomon's, I mean, he's set and the kingdom is, things are going well and he's greatly established. I guess I will drop that idea and follow God's idea. But he's so self-deceived. Secondly, number two, Adonijah became so bold that he came to Bathsheba. That's like unreal boldness. Unreal boldness. But you know that people can be so self-deceived, we can be so self-deceived that, uh, deceived that we come to the Lord, we come to the Lord and say, no, your way's not going to work. Um, well, this, is, this isn't working out. I'm going to try this. To think of the audacity, the boldness, for Adonijah to come to Bathsheba, Solomon's mother, and Bathsheba had already been involved in defending Solomon as king. If you look back in chapter 1, Back in chapter 1, in verse 11, it says, Wherefore Nathan spake unto Bathsheba and, and told Bathsheba what was going on. And so verse 15, Bathsheba went in unto the king. And in verse 17, she said unto him, My lord, thou swearest by the Lord thy God unto thy handmaid, saying, Assuredly, Solomon thy son shall reign after me and he shall sit upon my throne. And so Bathsheba was, I mean, totally, undoubtedly, for Solomon being king, because that's what the Lord had said. And those are the depths of self-deception for Adonijah to go to Bathsheba and try to get what he's trying to do is weasel his way in to be king. We know he's asking for Abishag to be his wife, and it is a way to try to weasel his way in one more try uh, to be king. And it is such self-deception. Uh, God help us, God help us um, to keep us from any kind of self-deception because the heart we know is deceitful above all things and just to keep our eyes, keep our eyes on the Lord. So number three, number three, Adonijah's depth here of Self-deception. Number three, he, Adonijah, convinced himself that he was peaceable. He convinced himself he was peaceable. He comes in and he says in verse 13, it says, Adonijah, the son of Haggith, came to Bathsheba, the mother of Solomon. And, I mean, the Bible repeats, it's the mother of Solomon. It's like, how foolish can he be? How foolish can people be that they think that they're going to defy 
God and do things their way, have their way. And so she said, come us out peaceably. She must have been like, how can this guy be coming to me? Has he lost his mind? Is he, you know, is he violent? You coming peaceably? And he said, peaceably. Well, he's lying. But he's, he says he's peaceable. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes, I'm coming peaceably. I want to take the kingdom away from your son, but I'm coming peaceably. And, you know, isn't it interesting that many who reject Jesus as king and they hate the church and they hate the Bible and they hate Christians, but they're for world peace. They're peace. They're peaceable people. They're, you know, they're for world peace and they're for coexistence. We just got to exist peaceably among each other. And, and they act like they're at peace with God. They're totally against the Lord Jesus and receiving him as Savior and having him reign over their lives, but they're peaceable. Self-deception. Don't you're not you're not peaceable. Uh, you are waging war. You're waging war against God. But Ananias, he thought he con, he had convinced himself that he was peaceable. Number four. Number four. Adonijah thought that what he had to say was more important than what God had already said. Let me repeat that. And then we see it in verse we see it in verse 14 where Adonijah comes in and it says he said moreover I have somewhat to say unto thee. Like who cares what you've got to say Adonijah? God's already said Solomon's king. And it's like politicians that me all over, well, I mean, whatever country you want to talk about, all over the world, you know, the kings of the world set themselves, the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed. We're going to have, it's not just politicians, it's school boards and on and on that they're going to talk about and try to justify doing things that are totally against God's word. And if they think that the more they talk about it, the more they talk and discuss, have their, their conferences, and uh, the more then they can justify, you know, we're right, we're right, God's wrong. And here comes Adonijah, he is so self-deceived. That he says, I've got, you know, I've got something. I have somewhat to say unto thee. Shh. Like, sometimes, sometimes, you know, people get upset about the preaching of God's word. And they, you know, I'm going to tell that preacher. And it's like, well, if the preacher's just saying the Bible... You know, what do you got to say? What can you what can you say? What can you possibly say that's gonna change God's word? We know it's nothing. We know it's nothing. And so Adonijah here, Adonijah thought that what he had to say was more important than what God had already said. Number five. Number five, Adonijah was trusting in blatant open lies. He's just trusting blatant open lies. I mean, just showing that, it's, uh, just looking at how, how could this guy be so, so self-deceived, so blind to what, he's, he's hanging himself. He's hanging himself. And really... Those, anybody that rejects the Lord Jesus as their Savior, they, they dig their own pit. 
The Bible talks about that. They're just there. They're going to receive the recompense of their own deeds in, rece- in, in rejecting the Lord. And uh, Solomon, Solomon in verse 15, he said, Thou knowest the kingdom was mine. No. What a blatant lie. What a blatant lie. My nephew, some of you know Chad, when he graduated from Pensacola Christian College, he stayed on staff and um, for a, a couple of years after he graduated, he was the one of the heads of the discipline committee. Discipline committee. And so, you know, at college, the discipline committee, kids get demerits, kids do things wrong, and if they, you know, really break the rules, they would have to go see the head of the disciplinary committee and deal with him. They might get kicked out of school. And anyway, Chad would tell me stories. Chad would say, it's just unbelievable. It is unbelievable how uh, kids will lie. These are, col- these are college-age kids. And he said, you know, we would know a certain situation going on where somebody cheated or stole or uh, what, whatever, uh, whatever it would be. And he'd say, so we'd take one of the kids, uh, we, we'd find out whoever's involved, whatever, and we'd have one kid in one room, another kid in the other room. And the, he said, we'd go in the one kid and say, uh, you know, so what happened, whatever, and they would just lie, 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 lie. And then he said, well, we have your friend in the other room that just said the exact opposite. You know, their face drops down like, and then, uh, and just story after story is self-deception. There was one story, he said, that the word got around, he heard, and so he went to the room to see it with his own eyes. A guy had a great big giant big screen television set in his dormitory room. Well, TVs were not even allowed at the college. They're not allowed at the college. And this kid has this great big, big screen TV set in his room. And so Chad goes to check it out. And lo and behold, the end of the story, this guy, how how on earth is he like Adonijah? How do you think you're going to get away with this? Self, self-deception. You're so deceived that you don't even realize uh, uh, the stupidity of what you're doing. So deceived. God help us because it happens in marriages. Self-deception happens in marriages. I'm not the problem. I'm not the problem. Well, God said you're supposed to be a loving husband. Yeah, but I'm not the problem. God says you're supposed to be a submissive wife. Yeah, but I'm not the problem. It happens in parenting. Well, I've done everything I ever could to raise that child right. A father told me that that was living in adultery for years. Living in adultery and saying, I've done everything right to raise my kids. Self-deception. Adonijah was more deceived than this kid that had the big screen television. And the story goes, just to tell the rest of the story is, that guy was a brain. He could have been, like, gone into any business and did great because he was smart enough to print out a receipt on his computer in his room. He made up a fake receipt. He walked into Walmart, had the staff at Walmart load the TV up for him, carry it out, put it in his car, showed them the receipt, and went back and put it in his room. How, how, you know, so Chad said, you know, normally... We have the kids come to disciplinary 
committee when they cheat or steal or lie. But in this case, we called the police. We had to call the police and had him arrested. Talk about self-deception. But like I said, I always puts the fear of God in every one of us because we can get some idea in our head and I don't have to forgive. I don't have to, uh, you know, I have a right to be angry about this. Or, uh, uh, God help us. Keep a, Adonijah, he's so, so self-deceived. He's, he's trusting blatant lies. When he comes in and says, thou knowest that the kingdom was mine. No, she knew that it wasn't his. And he knew it too. And it says, and that all Israel set their faces on me. That's not true because Nathan and Bathsheba and Solomon and those that wanted to go by David himself, uh, those that wanted to go by God's word, did not set their faces on you. It says that I should reign, howbeit the kingdom is turned about and has become my brothers. And then he says, I mean, he's just talking circles, and you'll find out people that are self-deceived, and trying to get away with things they sh uh, shouldn't be doing. They'll talk in circles. And he says, for it was his from the Lord. So he admits it, though he doesn't admit it. It's just confusion. And then he says in verse 16, Now I ask one petition of thee, deny me not. And she said unto him, say on. And she's just letting him talk. And you know that in the last day, men will be judged by their words. Their own words shall condemn them, their own rejection of the Lord. And so, number six, number six, Adonijah's self-deception. is Adonijah believed that he was only asking a simple request. He's only asking a simple request. And people think, well... I only have this little, you know, this, you know, receiving Jesus as my Savior, that's no, that's just a little thing. I don't have to, you know. Um, Adonijah, he just has this one petition. And when Bathsheba uh, goes into King Solomon, and uh, she said, down in verse 20, when she goes into Solomon, it says, then she said, I desire... One small petition of thee. And I think because we already know that Bathsheba is 100% for Solomon being king, she's just carrying this out so that true judgment will take place. But she goes in, just, this is just a small petition. Small petition? Small petition? This is going to, this would destroy the kingdom. This would overthrow Solomon as king. This is not one small petition. But you amazing how, you know, adulterer, an adulterer will say, well, I made this small, uh, just a small sin. You're deceiving yourself. It's destroying your family. It can send, your kids can turn against God. And you're, you're sending your kids to hell because you set such a terrible example that they'll never ever want to receive the Lord or look to the Lord. And it's, oh, it's just a small, it's, this is just a small little thing, you know, that I'm doing. That's the way Adam and I just looked at it. And that's the, the, the depths, the depths of Adam and I just self deception. Uh, so, you ever have, you ever have a big plan and it backfires on you? You ever have a great big, but yeah, I'm going to do this, and, and it just backfires on you, everything goes wrong? Well, that's what happened with Adam and I just playing here. It was his plan, apart, and not, God had nothing to do with it, but it wasn't just Adam and I that lost his life because of his self-deception, his conceit, his pride. It was his friends, too. We're just going to, in conclusion, let's read down uh, to verse 35. And you see what happens to Adonijah and his friends. 
And you can see his whole plan backfired. Anybody that rejects the Lord Jesus as king, their whole life will backfire. The Bible says the expectation of the wicked is, uh, shall perish. You might hope that, you know, they may hope they're going to heaven. They might plan on they're going to heaven. But if they haven't received the Lord Jesus as Savior, they're not going to heaven. And here, uh, let's just read down through the rest of the story. But it's like, talk about a big backfire. You know, you ever, you ever have a truck backfire on you so loud that it just... You almost, your heart almost starts, bang! Well, this is worse than that. Let's, um, so verse 17, he said, Speak, I pray thee, unto Solomon the king, for he will not say thee nay. I mean, that's another, how can you be so deceived? Uh, that he give Abishag the Shunammite to wife. And Bathsheba said, Well, I will speak for thee unto the king. And I think she was thinking, Yeah. I know what's going to happen here, but I'm going to do it because you got a problem that needs to be dealt with. Bathsheba therefore went unto King Solomon to speak unto him for Adonijah. The king rose up to meet her and bowed himself unto her and sat down on his throne and caused a seat to be set for the king's mother. And she sat on his right hand. Then she said, I desire one small petition of thee, I pray thee. Say me not nay. And the king said unto her, Ask on my mother, for I will not say thee nay. And she said, Let Abishag the Shunammite be given to Adonijah thy brother to wife. King Solomon answered and said unto his mother, And why dost thou ask Abishag the Shunammite for Adonijah? Ask for him the kingdom also, for he is my elder brother, even for him, and Abiathar the priest, and for Joab, the son of Zeruah. Then King Solomon swore by the Lord, saying, God do so to me, and more also, if Adonijah had not spoken his word against his own life. Now therefore, as the Lord liveth, which hath established me, and set me on the throne of David my father, and who hath made me a house, as he promised, Adonijah shall be put to death this day. And King Solomon sent by the hand of Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and he fell upon him that he died. And unto Abiathar the priest said the king, Get thee to Ananoth, and unto thy own fields, for thou art worthy of death, that I will not at this time put thee to death, because thou bearest the ark of the Lord God before David my father, and because thou hast been afflicted, and all wherein my father was afflicted. So... Solomon thrust out Abiathar from being priest unto the Lord, that he might fulfill the word of the Lord, which he spake concerning the house of Eli and Shiloh. So Abiathar, he's just banished. But it says, Then tidings came to Joab, for Joab had turned. Remember, these are the men that supported Adonijah. Well, it says uh, Joab had turned after Adonijah, though he turned not after Absalom. And Joab fled into the tabernacle of the Lord and caught hold on the horns of the altar. And it was told King Solomon that Joab was fled unto the tabernacle of the Lord. And behold, he is by the altar. Then Solomon sent Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, saying, Go fall upon him. And Benaiah came to the tabernacle of the Lord, said unto him, Thus saith the king, Come forth. And he said, Nay, but I will die here. And Benaiah brought the king word again, saying, Thus saith Joab, and thus he answered me. And the king said unto him, Do as he has said, and fall upon him, and bury him, that thou mayest take away the innocent blood which Joab shed from me, and from the house of my father. And the Lord shall return his blood upon his own head, who fell upon two men more righteous and better than he. And showed them unto the sword my father David, not knowing thereof to wit. Abner, the son of Ner, captain of the host of Israel. And Amasa, the son of Jether, captain of the host of Judah. Their blood shall therefore return upon the head of Joab, and upon the head of his seed forever. But upon David and his seed, and upon his house, and upon his throne, shall there be peace forever from the Lord. So Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, went up 
and fell upon him and slew him, and he was buried in his own house in the wilderness. And the king put Benaiah the son of Jehoiada in his room over the host, and Zadok the priest did the king put in the room of Abiathar. And so, Adonijah's self-deception didn't just hurt him, it hurt his friends that were involved with him. And just to think of the depths, the depths of Adonijah's self-deception. And let's pray.